I'd like to call the meeting to order. Welcome to the 84th Annual Meeting of the American Finance Association and the Presidential Address. My name is Kathleen Hanley, and I'm the Executive Secretary and Treasurer of the AFA. And I will begin the business portion of this meeting. First, I would like to recognize the results of the 2023 election. For presidents, we have Monica Piazzizi. President-elect and 2024 program chair is Elrique Malmander. Vice president is Wei Zhang. Our new directors are Viral uh, Acharya, Kai Li, and Christine Parler. I would like to thank the nominee committee and all those who ran for office. Many thanks go to our outgoing board members, Victoria Ivashina, uh, Andrew Caroli, and Laura Veldkamp. Uh, Annette has a plaque for Victoria and Laura, if you'd like to come up and get it. And thank you so much for your service. Uh, changes to the bylaws uh, during the election were overwhelmingly approved by the membership. As for AFA finances, the organization is currently running a deficit due to increased operating expenses and re reduced revenue from the journal. In order to offset some of that journal revenue decline, the board has voted to increase our membership dues from $39 a year to $100 a year. Uh, that puts us more in line with our peer association. We're also working very hard to reduce expenses throughout the organization. Thankfully, our portfolio increased by $2 million over the last fiscal year, and our, and our assets are currently at $26 million. Uh, in order to aid in your planning, the meetings next year will be in San Francisco and in the following year in Philadelphia. Before I turn the program over to our president, I just want to shout, give a shout out to Jim Schellheim, who has been so helpful to me in the transition to uh, AFA EST, and so uh, I, I very much appreciate all of his patience in my many, many questions. And of course, this organization could simply not run without the help of Annette Clark. She is responsible for the meeting and everything that goes into it. Uh, she really is the person behind the organization, so I'd like to give um, a, a hand for her, appreci in her appreciation for her, her hard work. And now I'll turn it over to the AFA president, Marcus Brunemeyer. So thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to have been here and uh, as president. I would like to thank uh, Kathleen for taking on this important role. I think that's the constant in the organization. And you know, the organization lives and dies with her, essentially. So it's very important. And you might wonder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might wonder if a German takes over the presidency, suddenly, you know, all the finances will be turned upside down. I think perhaps we have to be more frugal uh, down the road. In, uh, um, it's important for that. I would also like to thank uh, the program chair, Monica Piazzisi. Uh, she, she organized the whole meetings and uh, all the other members of the team who helped her with that. Thanks, and let's give a hand up. We have uh, various committees who work hard to keep the organization running. So all of them I would like to thank too, in particular the investment committee. Um, and you know, because we had to change a lot of the finances uh, in this time around. Uh, we also have AFFECT, which you know, is very effective and also CORD in um, organizing certain, you know, getting certain inclusion effects um, going. So I'll be very grateful for that as well. So the last year, besides the finances, was also characterized in getting the new journal going, the Journal of Finance Insights and Perspectives. Uh, we were hoping to get it running uh, in the beginning of last year, but uh, we were legally bound by the contract the Journal of Finance has with the publishing house that we cannot start a journal without their consent. Uh, we tried to figure things out and get some agreement, uh, but so far we could not achieve an agreement which is legally satisfying. And we are hoping, and then last few days, there was 
uh, change of heart by the publishing house, and we're hoping we get something done in the first half of this year. If not, then we have to wait till December 2025. Uh, but we are willing to do so in order to get the terms right, because any negotiations for the new journal will also affect the negotiations with the Journal of Finance and with the publishing house. Um, so that was, is, I would say, this was the, the core of the activities in last year and took most of the time. Then I would like to remind you as well that we have an ombudsman, and it's very important. So if anybody of you or any colleague approaches you, you should it would be important that you make everybody aware that we have this ombudsman. If there are any problems, they can approach her, send an email. You find out on the website whom, which, where the email is, so just contact her. It will be treated very confidential, uh, confidentially. So that's important uh, for our organization to do well. So finally, I would like to introduce a new program chair, Ulrike Malmendier. She will uh, organize next meeting in San Francisco. I would say her second hometown. Um, so she has some local advantage on this dimension as well. And uh, so we're looking forward to the submission of your papers. So it's very important that you still come and carry the meeting um, forward for the next year and also the subsequent years. And if you have any suggestions, I'm sure that Ulrike is very happy to take some suggestions uh, from you as well. With this, let me pass on the floor now to Monica who will take the next steps. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks very much to all the session chairs, authors, and discussants at, this, at these meetings. Um, in terms of the number of submissions and the number of sessions, they were roughly the same as last year. Uh, so we're going steady. Uh, the number of the, the composition of the submissions has changed. Uh, there are many more submissions now on ESG topics. So that is one big change. Uh, and maybe the sessions uh, next year may have to reflect that. It's just that the composition is changing. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Yuri Gorlichenko for the AFA lecture today and all of the panelists and the panel chairs uh, for these, the discussions we had exactly in this room uh, over the last two days. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, Ulrike and the poster session committee uh, th that worked really uh, amazingly well this year. Uh, so thanks everyone. Uh, let me just add a few words about um, the poster session and actually the travel grant program. For many of you who are so kind to always submit recommendations of who should receive travel grants, uh, you might have noticed that there was a change in our procedure. Um, we are now awarding the travel grants to those who have submitted a poster and have been accepted into the program. It has somewhat to do with you know, rising costs of travel and as Kathleen pointed out, us having to get closer to austerity and German frugality um, to, to make this uh, uh, um, organization continue. Um, but also it seems a nice way to fully integrate kind of these um, uh, rising young generation um, members of organ our organization. So in terms of the submission to the posters, we had many great submissions, over 400, and with 23% uh, acceptance, one of the lowest rates. Similar to what Monica said, the composition in terms of gender, 43 to 57, very stable um, uh, composition in terms of ethnicity. is really interesting to see, very stable. The selection of these posters um, happened thanks to a great committee um, which I want to thank here, um, Matthew Botch of Bodwin, Marius Günzel of Wharton, Sean Higgins of Northwestern Kellogg, Waldo Ojeda, Cuny, Leslie Shen of um, the Boston Fed, and Alex Walsio of UCSD, who did an amazing job um, devoting time to this junior scholar, so I'd like to thank them. Um, <laughs> Uh, 
Um, and lastly, to, to round up that program, um, we don't only have the posters out there, which I encourage you to look at, to look what the new generation is, is interested in doing, but we also always organize a panel session uh, with advice for junior scholars, um, where I am very uh, grateful to Victoria Vashina of uh, Harvard and Laura Feldkamp of Columbia in supporting me in organizing this session. Thank you so much again. Let me just say a last word. We continue to think about how to integrate the poster session more into what's going on at, this, um, at these meetings. We are not a poster um, kind of um, field where it's a common thing, like in the STEM sciences and sciences. So um, any suggestions maybe of participants this year also, how one could benefit from more interaction, peer interaction is very welcome. And um, thank you very much for everybody for participating. Um, so, welcome everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, I uh, want to give you uh, first an overview of some of the new things that we are implementing at the JF, um, an overview of the state of the Journal of Finance in general, and then obviously most excitingly we will uh, announce the prizes for this year. So let me start off by telling you a bit um, about some innovations that we are implementing at the Journal of Finance or that we have implemented at the Journal of Finance. First of all, we are introducing the role of a JF data editor to increase um, the, if you want, um, disclosure, not just of code, but also of data. The idea here is um, that we will have the data editor verify code submitted to the JF to cleanly, that it cleanly replicates all the results in the paper. Um, either using public data or paywall protected data. Um, the data itself, of course, doesn't have to be posted, but we want to make sure that the code um, replicates uh, the, the results in the paper. And as in the past, for data that is um, you know, confidential and, and cannot be shared, editors have the opportunity to waive this responsibility. And I want to also actually send a shout out and a thank you to Tony White at, at the JFE, um, because a lot of you will see the, the way we will follow um, the, the data disclosure is similar to what the JFE is al already doing. Um, I'm excited to say that the first uh, data editor um, for the JF will be um, Hong Ru, who is actually in the audience and who <laughs> exactly, who is a tenured associate professor at NTU, um, a former PhD student at MIT, and actually currently visiting MIT as well. So thank you, Hong, very much for taking on this actually very important role. So that's the first innovation. Um, the, the other thing that we have implemented is that we have built a searchable repo repository of presentation slides for papers that have been accepted at the JF. So the idea here is that it allows you to actually provide a short presentation of your results that is then searchable by keyword, by author's name, et cetera. And the hope, of course, is that this will um, create you know, a more centralized repository um, of slides that can be used for teaching, that can basically be used right, to make um, the sharing of, of results easier um, in the profession. And I actually want to thank Annette very much for working with me to, to build, you know, kind of that website. Um, this will go live now, and hopefully people will start um, putting their slides up there. Um, I also want to implement a change that we will limit the resubmission time for RNRs to 12 months at the JF. I know that's very different from what the JF has done before, but I'm starting to still get, um, you know, kind of RNRs back from Ken Singleton time. And I think, you know, it is actually somewhat useful. And by the way, I'm a, I have been an offend, offendant um, in these type of things as well. Um, it's just, I think it's, it behooves us all to actually move the process along um, more quickly. And again, editors um, obviously can grant exceptions where they seem it's due. Finally, let me say that the GF will be fully digital starting this year, so no more printed copy. Um, journalists and so on can request printed copies, um, but we will be digital. And then lastly, in terms of innovations, um, as you know, we will have the Brettel and DFA prize winners later today. Um, we want to implement um, 
one more innovation, which is that the authors of the winning first prize have the option to present their work in a webinar that is open to AFA members, prize sponsors, and the prize sponsors community. Um, this will be hosted by one of the JFA editors, and there will be a Q&A, and afterwards it will be, um, you know, kind of on the AFA website. Yeah? So, there's one final innovation in the year of austerity and the, German, uh, the Germans taking over this, uh, this organization is that we will also have a submission rate increase at the JF. So we haven't had an increase for, I think, more than a decade. Um, and what the new um, submission fees will be is that for AFA members, it will be $400 um, per submission, which was two, uh, previously at 250. For non-members, it will be 525. But as you can see very strategically, this is priced in a way to encourage everyone to be a member and take advantage of the lower fees. Um, finally, we will still be reimbursing half of the money upon desk rejection, um, but you know, we will now actually take a small cut on desk rejection. And obviously there will be the discounts for low and medium um, income countries and, and all the discounts we had before. All right, so those are the innovations. Let me now very quickly um, run over the, the JF statistics. Um, first, our submissions have held very steady if not gone up a little bit. So new submissions are at 1,142. Resubmissions are at 165, which is much higher than usual. But some of it, as you can imagine, is driven by the fact that the old team um, is in the process of wrapping up, you know, kind of the submissions to them. Um, and then total submission due to that is 1,307. Our turnaround statistics are still, in my mind, very good. Um, so uh, NT means for the new team, for, uh, turnaround statistics for the year of 2023 is basically um, a median turnaround time of 40 days. That used to be you know, closer to 50. Um, and as you can also see at the bottom panel here is that the fraction of papers that are more than 100 years um, has really shrunk. You see, this is, exactly, Ken Singleton is not that old. It's like, this is like, the survival of the organization is really assured. Um, all right, 100 days, um, you know, is, um, is staying low, even though, you know, kind of mea culpa, there are a few papers that indeed have taken quite a long time. Um, now, in terms of um, desk rejection, first round statistics and desk rejection, our desk rejection rate, as I already explained last year, um, the whole, the, our goal is to have a slightly higher desk rejection rate, which is, as you can see, around 43% um, at the moment. Um, now, the benefits of having a higher desk rejection rate, um, you can see in the right panel, is basically Mm, what, we, what you can see is that our um, probability of first round RNR actually is at um, a bit above 8% at the moment, but conditional on not being desk rejected, we are at 16%. And we think actually that in a way that's a good trade off for the profession, right? That papers that um, will not go forward quickly here back, and therefore, you know, kind of for the papers, um, you know, that, that have a chance, you see the, the higher rate. And then finally, we also still have um, uh, holding steady, basically, that the number of rounds for accepted papers, um, more than 90% of the papers um, actually converge, if you want, um, within, uh, within two rounds. Finally, um, very quickly, let me say, you know, kind of our number of, of published papers this year have held, are only slightly elevated from last year, so have held steady, while, you know, kind of the other top finance journals, the JFE RF, uh, RFS, have come down. Our numbers will actually go up next year because we have a big pipeline, and now that everything is digital, you know, kind of we can push it out much more quickly. And then finally, um, total citations. So if you look at total sites in 2020 relative to you know, other peer journals, um, the JF is basically almost level with the JFE, but behind the AER and holding steady. Um, in terms of five-year impact factor, we are just behind, I mean, we are behind the QGE and the AER. 
but you know, kind of the long run impact um, is quite strong. Um, as you can see, it's 11.6 compared to say um, 11.5 at the JFE and 9.7 at the RFS. Um, and then finally, the two-year impact factor is something that I will be watching very carefully because here um, the GF has actually dropped a little bit in the last year, relative, not dropped in absolute terms, but relative um, to some of its peer journals. All right. Having said this, let me um, finish the update by saying big thank yous to my co-editors, Urban German, Leonid Kogan, Jonathan Llewellyn, and Thomas Philippon. Um, a continued thank you to the prior editorial team for really helping us with a smooth transition. And then obviously thank you to all of you, um, hardworking associate editors, referees. Um, we are very grateful and we obviously couldn't do this type of job um, without the, our community. All right, so therefore, without further ado, the most exciting part of this um, presentation is the best paper prizes for the JF this year. Um, as you might remember from previous years, um, the process is that the papers are basically selected by, or pre-selected by the AEs, the associate editors, who can decide um, whether they want to vote for both prizes, the DFA and the Brattle Prize, or just one of them. Most of them vote on both. Um, the AEs nominate their top three ranked um, ordered papers um, for the year of you know, 2022 to 2023, and then the editors make a final selection among the highest ranked papers. And so now, without further ado, I want to, you know, kind of announce the winners. Our process will be that Leonard Kogan um, and representative from DFA and Brattle will, present, uh, will yeah, present the winners with the prizes. We will start with the Brattle Group Prize. Um, so may I ask the two of you to come up? Um, so let me say the first um, runner-up paper or the distinguished paper is um, Reusing natural, natural Experiment by Davidson uh, Heath, Matthew Ringenberg, Marat Samadi, and Ingrid Werner. And I think most of the authors are here. May I ask you to come up and get your prize? Let me also say that I have the check, so you should step by here to get your check. <laughs> you, you can come here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Mm. Congratulations. And so the second, pri the second distinguished paper prize goes to Sasha Indate, Moral Hazard versus Liquidity in Household Bankruptcy. I think Sasha is here. Great, and final, last but not least, obviously, um, the first prize goes to Daniel Paravicini, Veronica Rappaport, and Philip Schnabel, specialization in bank lending, evidence from exporting firms. And I think Philip. <laughs> So um, this is the Brattle Group Prize part. And so now we're going to move um, to the Dimension Fund Advisor Prizes. And we even get a... <laughs> um, and I would ask the representative from DFA to come up. Thank you. Um, so the first distinguished uh, paper for the DFA Prize um, is uh, Hui Chen, Zhu Chen, Zigo He, um, Jin Ju Lu, and Rang Ming Jie, um, Pledgeability and Asset Prices, Evidence from the Chinese Corporate Bond Markets. Congratulations. <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, perfect. Um, the second distinguished prize paper is, um, is there a replication cri uh, crisis in finance? I encourage you to read <laughs> whether it's yes or no. And uh, Thies, Ingers, Lev Jensen, Brian Kelly, and Lasse Hedge Peterson. Um, congratulations. And then uh, last but not least, the first prize paper, DFA uh, paper, goes to Nicolas Crozet and Janice Eberly, Rents in Intangible Capital, a Q plus framework. So again, congratulations to um, all our prize winners. This was really a very hard year to make selections. There were lots of great papers. So thank, thank you to all of you and congratulations again. And in particular, thank you also to our sponsors for their continued support and hopefully their participation in our new webinar. So thank you everyone, that's it from me. I'm Laura Starks, I'm the past president of the um, AFA, and I am have the real honor of talking about the AFA Society of Fellows and our newly elected fellow. So the AFA Society of Fellows program was established in January 2000, and the purpose is to recognize those members who have made a distinguished contribution to the field of finance. Each year, the outgoing president becomes a fellow and also, the nominating committee, chaired by the current president, solicits names from the membership and nominates a slate of no more than five candidates uh, from which the current fellows elect one new fellow. You can see the list of the fellows on the AFA website. I am pleased to announce that the newly elected fellow for this year is Ravi Jagannathan, the CME group John Sander, Chair of Finance at Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management. And so if you can come up, I'll... <laughs> so Ravi has published important work in multiple areas of finance, including asset pricing, capital markets, portfolio performance appraisal, and financial institutions. His work has been fundamental to key areas of finance, and just to mention a few, because he's had a lot of impact. He is particularly well known for being the, the founder of the conditional capital asset pricing model. Um, he is also particularly well known for the Hansen Jagannathan bound, and then another uh, measure that has his name, the Hansen Jagannathan distance, the TGARCH GJR volatility model and the use of portfolio weight constraints in estimating large covariance matrices, matrices with precision. Also, he, Ravi, I, I don't want to ignore what he's done for other people. So beyond his direct contributions to, to finance research through his papers, he's also had significant impact on the quality of many articles in the Journal of Finance, where he was an associate editor, and then at the Review of Financial Studies, where he ended up being executive editor. So oh, he, he's been a great mentor for many people. So thank you, Ravi, and congratulations. It is a great honor to be selected as a fellow of, elected as a fellow of the AFA. When I look at the achievements of the other fellow fellows, I feel humbled. 
and at the same time honored. I owe a lot to a number of people uh, for, who have helped me with my research career. And in particular, I would like to thank Lars Hansen, uh, who taught me how to do research in finance. Uh, Larry Gloston, who was a great colleague and a co-author and much more from whom I learned a lot. And Zenyu Wang, who started out as a student and I thought I'll teach him a lot. It turned out he taught me a lot more. And, uh, and late uh, Jack Carrigan, who were a great mentor to me. And uh, last but not the least, I'd like to thank my wife, Vaidehi, and my sons, Ashwin and Vijay, for their unwavering support and making life fun. And uh, thank you for electing me to this august body. Thank you. <laughs>